now I'd like to discuss one of the, to my mind, most interesting and most visual examples of uh, thought experiments in quantum mechanics, and it's called Elitzer Weidman Bomb Tester. So imagine you have a room, dark room, in which you might have a bomb, and you have such a bomb that if on it just one photon, if one photon falls upon this bomb, it goes off. Now, you can you can you say something about whether there is a bomb in the room or there isn't a bomb in the room? Yes. So we have a room. And we don't know whether there is bomb or no. Uh, and uh, not blow up the bomb. Yes, so classically, this thing is impossible. In order to say whether there is something, you need to poke it, yes, with a stick, with your eye, you need to see the reflected photon all out of it, with your, uh, like, whatever you need to touch, touch the thing, you need to touch the bomb in order to say that is there. Quantum mechanically, though, it seems that it's possible. And now we will look at a way how we can do it. If you feel like you can do it, try to try to think about it. Pause the video and try to think how you could perhaps combine pre your previous knowledge with uh, this new thing and try to do it. When I say one photon falls, falls on it, I mean like any particle, anything that falls on this bomb it makes it go off or imagine you have only photons with which to check it out in a sense you can think uh, it's like a it's like a it's some analogy some analogy it's like you have a room and inside you have a glass bottle you have a glass bottle or you don't have a glass bottle and you have a stick with which you can check whether there is a glass bottle or no but uh, you're checking the glass bottle always breaks it because you your your stick is too too huge and uh, and uh, that's a problem classically it's impossible now let's see how quantum mechanically it works quantum mechanically the setup is now quite simple as we when we know about the interferometer and stuff the setup is quite simple you just put your uh, room with a possibly bomb and I draw it in this way possibly there is a bomb on the way of your Max Zander interferometer yes so you have beam splitters, mirrors beam splitters you have a single photon source like a single photon flies out now let's see what is the what are the scenarios uh, and you have same detectors detectors and your uh, max Zander interferometer is tuned in such a way that constructive interference comes here into detector 2 so let's see what is the uh, what will happen if there is no bomb? So it's empty room. We see that detector two gets the photons in hundred percent of the cases. That's it. That's the scenario for no bomb. Now, what happens if there is a bomb? Here it will be more sophisticated. Well, if the photon goes along this path, it will for sure blow up the bomb. And this will happen if we have 50-50 beam splitter. And this will happen in 50% of the cases. So 50% of the cases, bomb goes off. Now, what happens with the rest of the cases? Our photon 
might go with 50% probability along this path. And remember when we have uh, spoken about the classical wall, now the photon has nothing to interfere with. So it gets split on the second beam splitter into two paths, here and here, each with the same probability. So with 25%, 25% probability, we have detector 2 firing, clicking. And with 25% probability, we have detector 1 clicking. If we look now at the statistics, yes, yeah, so if we compare statistics, what do we see? Well, in 50% of the cases, you will have uh, you will have basically uh, blow, uh, bomb going off, and uh, your photon is lost, your bomb is lost, and you didn't find out. Well, you found out that there was a bomb, but no bomb anymore. In 25% of the cases, and that's important. The detector 2 goes off and it's the same information as you would get as if there was no bomb. So in 25% of the cases you're undecisive. You don't know whether there is a bomb in the room or there isn't a bomb in the room. So you can't say. And, and that's most important, in 25% of the cases you get a distinct result. A bomb, like detector 1 clicking. And that's a result that has no, no, no same like that. That is not uh, that is not in the set of results for no bomb. Yes, like when there's no bomb, detector one never clicks. Now here, detector one clicks in twenty five percent of the cases. So, if you have uh, like hundred rooms, uh, each of them might have a bomb. Each of them might not have a bomb. You could, in fact. With 25% chance, 25% chance, find out that there is a bomb in the dark room without blowing up this bomb. And this is, uh, just pause for a second and think about it, uh, how deep it is. You have the photon, your photon is not lost, but it gives you some information about what is happening in this uh, dark room it gives you uh, like distinct information that there is a bomb so it the photon has sort of gone through that path and it hasn't gone through that path we somehow are able to tell whether the photon whether the bomb is not is in the room uh, by change in the interference pattern and uh, to my mind it's very deep it's uh, the photon uh, touches the bomb without touching it. And uh, of course, it's just 25%. But we will see how we can improve these results uh, a little bit, a little by little. And uh, in your leisure time, think maybe how could you improve this result and uh, have a higher fidelity of your apparatus. But 25%, uh, uh, I understand it sounds like a little bit, but 25% is actually a lot. There is something, and uh, with, if you have something, you can uh, already amplify this something into a better result. It's better than zero. Uh, so see you next video to see how we can improve the fidelity of this machine.